already. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 so, so Jordan, yes. Paul, tell me, what are some of the underlying concerns of this series? Uh, so coming into it, uh, I was sort of looking at the original text and I'm looking at the way the original text perceived women. And I think I was very interested um, in updating it, but also being able to sort of position it for some of the, some of the, I want to say, some of the, the countervailing and bailing currents that, that you see happening today. And so it's sort of, um, with, with Carmilla and Laura in particular, that became about very much a dialogue of innocence and experience, because that's what's coming out of the novel itself, right? Carmilla's yeah. always sort of like, you don't understand. Girls are caterpillars. <laughs> Things like that. And of course, she's like, okay, you're kind of weird. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so I, I thought it would be interesting to try to update that dialogue uh, in, into to sort of Laura, who's very much like she is naive, but she also has these terrific intentions about like she's going to change her world. Yeah. This is it's like she doesn't think this is right. She's going to get in there, and she has no idea what that might take or what that means. She's throwing herself into the face of. Whereas Carmilla is sort of all too aware of just how badly this is about to go, and if she can just be at minimum safe distance, that would be. That would be awesome. Yeah. So, so there was that that dynamic was something that I really wanted to preserve and take for because I think that actually is a, a, a big thematic concern these days. Like, I mean, you see a lot of, of people trying to engage with how much, say, activism they want to take on, and, and sometimes feeling very overwhelmed about what the mechanics of their world can look like. Yeah. Uh, and in particular, one of the things that I I wanted to to touch upon was how that works for um, for girls, for feminism, for for coming into that because I think. There was a time, maybe 10 or, yeah, probably about 10 years ago, when there was sort of like a downtick in feminism, when you got a lot of those sort of reactionary things, which is like, I'm not a feminist. I, like, especially from, from girls, you know, coming up right high school, I'm not a feminist. Boys don't like feminists. <laughs> um, and, and you just think, you know, Get in your own corner because nobody else is gonna. Um, but uh, so I very much I think wanted to try to get at, uh, at, at, at that feeling of we're technically supposed to be in a world where like yay feminism and, and things have been overhauled and yeah you know you, you just you turn on your news feeds or you and you just you step in something every day just like oh you know I here it was silly me I thought it was twenty fourteen but no no apparently we're still like twelve percent of the publishing share and making seventy percent of the dollar and, and 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 all those other things are still very much just going on uh, and uh, and so and and for me in particular like the the the, the sort of ways girls to tend to be elided especially when they vanish that sort of victim blaming that goes on all of that was sort of informing what i wanted to head into this world uh and, and to have it be something that laura can very much like react to like no this is wrong because i think especially if you were raised on uh, on on narrative, like I was, I was very much raised on narrative, uh, especially those early childhood narratives. There's such a clear sense of like there is right and there is wrong, and you go out there and you do right, and everything will turn out okay. So the two <laughs> things kind of connect together, right? Where it's just sort of like, and then you get into the real world and you discover if you do right, sometimes that just makes you a chump. That's cool. <laughs> I want to like expand on that and say. Um, one of the things that I love about the series and about your writing is that what separates it from other like college age themed shows is that it is a love story but it's also at the core of it it's about a girl looking for her friend and like stopping at nothing to m make sure that she's safe mm -hmm. and that everything like so i love that because it's like there are like romantic elements and like so often you find um like high school and college age stuff to just be about um, first love and how much you're willing to compromise your personality for that. Mm -hmm. And I think the one, like, um, Natasha, who plays Carmilla, and I, we talked about this, we are like, it's so great because both of our characters do change so much over the course of the show, but we're, like, learning from each other, and we're, like, growing into, like, our own separate people. We're not just, like, um, abandoning our friends and, um, all these things you see happen in these like romantic comedies about people in their like early 20s and you're like stop doing that <laughs> so it's cool because so i love that like i i yeah so 
Well, thanks for writing that. <laughs> Thank you. That's actually like a, that's a big deal for me because I really do. I always like the idea of romance. Like I always love those. Um, like one of my favorite lines in the world is uh, in Much Ado, where where you get Benedict yeah. saying, "Yes, yeah, no." It's it's one of my favorite plays. Like there's so many great things, but I do love Benedict saying, "I do love nothing in the world so well as you." It's not that strange. <laughs> it's such a weird declaration of love. And there's another one um, that's even more so in a more obscure play uh, called The Ladies Not for Burning by Christopher Fry, that the, where, where, where Thomas, who's, who's so very much a Benedict kind of figure, uh, even more so perhaps, uh, is sort of like, you force me to admit the disastrous truth, I love you. A misadventure so intolerable, hell, could not do more. Um, so so I, I love those sorts of like, oh my god, you can feel that. Like, he doesn't even want to be in love, and he's that in love. And I frequently feel so underserved by by uh, so many romances out there because they just they're sort of like and then we meet and then we're happy and then this very obvious little thing happens and it's just like no romance needs to be the meeting of profound and distinct people with troubles and snarls and yeah. then it needs to be the working out of like I really love the 1930s when you had these screwball comedies that were frequently about like so I'm really poor and you're really rich and we must hate each other because of these things and then through this romance we're gonna work out our class differences and come up with like, like uh, is, it, is it Howard Hawks let's say it's Howard Hawks who's just like we can totally work out class differences through this genre that just happens to be about love um, we couldn't do that now you know, the wealth disparity is way too much but um but yeah so so that a, thank you. Yeah. That was what I was shooting for. And B, so, I think I think it's really important in the way we like. Yeah. We need more substance to to how it is we see romance. Cool. I love that. Yeah. yeah.